When I read a book, I prefer there to be some story involved in a fictional setting. Nonfiction books don't really interest me, but in a recent trip to Washington, D.C., I stopped in an old bookstore and found a new book by Douglas Preston, who also wrote The Relic alongside Lincoln Child. It was outside of my usual style of books, detailing a real-life archaeological trek into the jungles of Honduras looking for the ruins of a legendary city known as the White City, or the City of the Monkey God. Background. The book is really a non-fiction account of several expeditions headed by a filmmaker named Steve Elkins. For a quarter of a century, Elkins was obsessed with archaeology and the idea of discovering the lost city of the Monkey God. He tried once in the 90s, only to end up with nothing. His next trek occurred in 2012, which actually yielded some results for the use of LIDAR, which I'll get to later. He returned again years later with a full crew of scientists to analyze and document everything they found. What did they uncover? Was it the lost city they were looking for? Well, you'll just need to read the book to find out for yourself. History. Local legends of the Lost City go back about 500 years, around the time when Europeans were arriving to these new lands. Several explorers throughout the ages have gone into the jungles of Honduras, some claiming success, while others did not. One man in particular, named Theodore Mord, claimed to have discovered the city, having brought back hundreds of artifacts from what he claimed were ancient ruins. However, his claims were never substantiated, and he committed suicide among accusations of fraud, without revealing the location of the supposed lost city. Main Character There isn't a real main character because this isn't that sort of book. Instead, we get Douglas Preston narrating the history of the city, previous attempts to find it, describing some first-hand experience in digging around the jungle, and the results of their exploration. He clearly has an intense interest in archaeology and exploration, and that comes through in his writing. He originally joined the trek south as a writer for The New Yorker, but I imagine he would have asked to come along even if it meant paying his way down directly. Writing style. While reading what is effectively a documentary would not appeal to everyone, Preston brings up a number of interesting factoids so that people interested in history, archaeology, or simple exploration tales would still get something out of this book. He opens up to his first venture into the jungle, led by a former SAS soldier, giving them a speech about all the horrible ways they could die, one specific example being at the fangs of the venomous fur de lance snake. Preston then regales us with the history of the Lost City, before coming back to his adventure. He keeps just enough in there to keep an interested audience engaged, but if you don't already find this kind of stuff intriguing, the book could come off as very slow or dull. Still, I think most readers would find some excitement in his first night camping in the jungle, in which he was nearly bitten by a fertilance. LIDAR One unique advantage that Elkins and his crew had over every explorer in the region before him was that he was able to use a device called a LIDAR, which stands for Light Detection and Ranging. I wanted to bring it up because this very expensive sonar was the main reason the expedition had any chance of success. Basically, it's fired down at the ground from a plane and receives an image based on the topography of the land. It's able to cut through the dense vegetation, and that makes finding ruins ridiculously easier. This journey wouldn't have been possible without LiDAR, but even then, there were some issues just in getting it down to Honduras, which again adds some spice to the book. Rating I originally bought this book because I wanted to read more of Douglas Preston's work. While this was not the sort of book I had intended to get, I don't regret my purchase. Overall, I'd say this book was pretty good. Not a bad time to be had, for sure. If you like documentaries and you like history, you might find this book worth your while. If you're not sure if you'd like this book, then why not check out the National Geographic documentary covering the same event? Heads up, it was made independently from this book, so no adaptation review, but I've watched it and it's not bad. They even interviewed Douglas Preston, and that was amusing enough for me. So, have you read the book? What did you think? If not, do you want to read it now? Whatever your thoughts, comment below and stay tuned for more.